birds flying in formation. So they're able to fly much further without getting tired. In, in our case, we're trying to reduce uh, fuel burn. And what we're trying to do is really take that inspiration and make it uh, realizable for aircraft. So we've seen from flight tests, we've been able to get anywhere from five to 10% reduction in fuel burn. That's enabled by the software that we've built in and we actually have extra situational awareness of where the lead aircraft is, what the winds is experiencing, so that helps us predict the wake. Now this is uh, very substantial if you think about the investment we've put into products like uh, the 8.7 or the 4.7-8 or, or the next product. They're talking 20-25% and here we're able to get half that with the uh, software change. The lead aircraft generates lift and that action of generating lift is what creates those vortices. And that's what you see when you look up and you see the control, you see those nice ribbons sometimes form. You look at your drain as it drains out, you actually see a little ribbon that forms up. That's a vortex, yeah, but it's now coming off the wingtip. We then position a trail aircraft close to that wake, which is energy lost when it was generating the lift. And now we let the trail aircraft recapture some of that energy. Actually, our pilots refer to it as Surfing. In fact, the acronym for the program is Surfing Aircraft Vortices for Energy. Save. For the Air Force, uh, they're very interested in this for military transports. They've spent a lot of time doing fuel efficiency initiatives, and there's nothing out there that's got this kind of potential reduction. Yeah, I look for inspiration in nature, amongst the birds and the insects. Um, but there's definitely, I think, a lot out there. That's a challenge to me. You know, what is a bird doing, and how can we take advantage of that?